Hi, so this week it's single eyeshadows. I love a single eyeshadow. I feel like no fuss is ever made of single eyeshadows. Um, we get, as consumers and as lovers of beauty, we obviously get really obsessed with um, palettes and quartets, like this gorgeous one here from Chantecaille. Amazing. Um, but what I do find time and time again is that women will buy a palette and I'll see the palette a year down the line, six months down the line, and one will be completely gouged out and you'll be able to see the metal underneath. One has had a little bit of action and um, the other two are completely untouched, which is a massive waste of money. You're talking about kind of, you can pay up to 50 quid for an eyeshadow quad, um, which is obviously mad anyway, but especially when you're only using one color. A single eyeshadow is your best friend. You can just pick the color you like, know you're gonna use it, you can mix it with all your other colors, no money wasted, no harm done. But because they're not so thrilling, to look at in the palette. You don't often hear much about them, but I'm really, really into single eyeshadows. I've got millions of them. Um, <clears throat> what's quite exciting is that this season, we've seen loads of the brands focusing on single eyeshadows. Um, Elizabeth Arden, Clarins, they've both relaunched their single eyeshadow offering and they've repackaged them and come out with loads of really great colors. Estee Lauder as well, they're in their, within their pure color um, family, have brought out the most amazing shadows. The textures are amazing and so many people are focusing on them. So many brands are focusing on them this season. That I wanted to do something on them and show you how so easy they are to use. This autumn, there are loads of really sludgy sort of colors around. So when I say sludgy, I mean kind of, you know, moss green, this one from Lizelle's beautiful, um, lovely sludgy browns. This one just has a little bit of shimmer in it from Burberry. Burberry are amazing at eyeshadow, by the way. This one's called Midnight Brown, so it's a bit more dressy for evening. But loads of these kind of sludgy, um, mossy, earthy sorts of colours. Um, also, there's tons and tons and tons of purple. Um, you may have noticed that and think I've omitted them here. That is deliberate. I've got a column and a video coming up on purple very, very soon. But for now, I just want to talk about single eyeshadows. Um, <clears throat> the thing about single eyeshadows that makes them so great is that you can obviously introduce color very easily, very simply, without having to faff around with blending loads of colors together. It just gives you a bit of depth, a bit of definition. I remember years ago, I was interviewing, about two years ago, I was interviewing a very, very famous makeup artist, probably the most famous makeup artist in the world. And I asked her what she wouldn't be without, and she said mascara and brown eyeshadow. And I found that very interesting because when time is tight, um, people, the one thing that a woman will generally drop is eyeshadow. She just put on a bit of liner or mascara um, and no shadow. And I asked her why she said brown eyeshadow. And she said, because it just gives depth and warmth and definition to my face. And it makes me feel done up, even though it's a two second job, which may be a bit of an exaggeration, but it's certainly a quick job. So I just wanted to show you um, how versatile single eyeshadows are. Everyone should have a single nude. And when I say nude, I actually mean beige. Nude, of course, can mean any color that a skin tone comes in. Um, so what I mean really is a biscuity color, like this one here from Clarins. That will just any, any day you're leaving the house, put that all over your eyelids with a big eyeshadow brush um, like this, and you'll just feel more done. It'll stop your liner transferring as badly. It'll stop your mascara smudging up here as badly. It's really worth doing, even though it's effectively invisible. However, so everyone should own one of those. There's one from MAC called Shroom, which I recommend a lot, it's fantastic. But anything that's that sort of biscuity color. However, if you're starting to um, introduce a shade, just get one that you really love. I tend to um, go for browns, greens, navies, those sorts of colors. I'm not really into pastels particularly, although there are lots of pistachio shades this autumn, which I really love, um, but that would be the one exception. Um, you can really go shimmery or you can go matte. I tend to prefer something in the middle. Um, matte can be hard to blend and shimmery can be um, a bit of a mess and it can fade very, very quickly. So I like a sort of satin finish somewhere in the middle. Um, so I'll just show you now how I would introduce a color. You basically just wanna choose any color that kind of goes with your clothes or appeals to you. Um, you can be on the safe side, you can go for something like um, a bronze or a brown, things that tend to be quite forgiving. Or if you want to introduce a really strong color um, like navy or bottle green, um, that's really, really effective too. So you can introduce a color in a couple of different ways. Firstly, you can do it via a liner. Um, now for this, you want 
a little small round edge brush and I'm going to use this one from NARS, it's called Night Clubbing, I love it, it's a sort of gold shot, kind of mossy sort of colour and to do that you just take the small brush, couldn't be easier, you line the eyes and that would really be enough probably for a kind of dinner out or something. You wouldn't need to go to town on shadow. I always put liner under the eyes if I'm wearing it on the top. If I'm not wearing it on the top, fine, I just go straight to mascara. But if I'm wearing it on the top, I think it looks a bit lost. Your eyelashes underneath can get a bit lost because everything's looking upwards. And you just take the brush and line. And the brilliant thing about using a shadow as a liner is it's so much more forgiving than a pencil. You don't need a steady hand. You don't need to be able to draw straight lines. If you can't go in one big stroke with a pencil, a shadow's perfect because you can do lots of little ones. And just keep getting a little color and bring it all the way around. You wanna make sure that it joins at this side. So already my eyes look a lot darker because I'm wearing that single eyeshadow as a liner. The other way you can introduce colour is obviously all over the eyelid, which gives you more depth. So in this instance, you would take a small eyeshadow brush, it's like a bigger version of the liner brush, um, round edged, nice and domed, natural bristles, you want natural bristles for powder, synthetic bristles for cream. We've done cream shadow in another video if you want to know about that. And let's what shall I go for? At the moment I have a sort of top on my eye, so let's go for something that goes over the top. So this is a new one by Laura Mercier, so lovely. And I'm just going to add a little sparkle to what I'm already wearing, which is Clarins Taupe. Taupe, taupe, I never really know. Right. And you would just stroke that up to the brow bone and slightly over, because we don't want it to disappear when eyes are closed, or eyes are open. I mean, the texture of these Laura Mercier ones, the one I'm using now, what colour is it? It's called Gilded Bronze. It's so lovely, it really deposits lots of colour. It's not too soft. Generally speaking, if a powder is very, very soft, it goes flying about in dust particles as you apply it. And if a powder is very, very hard, it doesn't deposit enough colour on your face. It's just too hard to get onto the skin. So you want something in the middle, in the middle. These are just soft enough. And I've taken it right up there and I've only got shadow on this part of my eye, nowhere else. But it looks, I mean, you can achieve so much with a single shadow. It looks as though I've been faffing about for ages with lots of different colours. And if you get an earthy tone like this, that's in the same colour family as your natural skin tone, then it'll be all the more forgiving and all the more natural. If you wanted to introduce a bolder colour, you would do exactly the same thing. So this one by Estee Lauder is out this season. It's so lovely. It's actually called pistachio. There's loads of these pistachio shadows around. Such a lovely texture. You would do exactly the same as I just did. I'm not sure how ridiculous it will look if I have both of these colours. I'm prepared to do it in the name of research. You could just pop a, dark, um, a bright colour like this pistachio over the lid, just to introduce a bit of brightness to the face. I wouldn't personally team it with a red lipstick, to be quite honest. But each to their own. I would tend to go for a fairly neutral lip. Not that bad, is it? So um, I personally would go straight in with that and I wouldn't layer it over brown, but I did just want you to see there are loads of these colours out this season. Um, so you can do that. You can add it all over your lid or you can put it on as a liner. But I do think they're just sort of girl's best friend. Buy a couple of those in colours you genuinely love, not four where you love one colour. Get two colours that are going to really serve you. A good nighttime colour, a good daytime colour. Um, and one of them wants to be so neutral and so barefaced that you can just shove it on in the morning, on the train, on the bus, 
whatever you need to do in the time that you have, just shove it on. Nobody will notice if it's wrong and it'll just give you a really good base and a little extra definition for your eye. Um, I've chosen my favourite six shadows of the season um, underneath the column um, that all come in a variety of colours, but there are so many out there this season. I really recommend you go out and shop around. Um, I'll be around to answer your questions, hopefully in the comments section. Do let me know what they are. Thanks very much. Bye.